Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Game of Trades and this is going to be a long-term technical analysis of the S&P 500. We're going to approach this from a technical standpoint, taking a look at the longer term momentum. And we're also going to be discussing the macro economic outlook. Anyone that has a broad view of both of these perspectives will have the upper hand in their long-term investments. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to go in depth on how I'm positioning myself in terms of investing. Now let's jump into the technicals. We have a monthly chart of the S&P 500 right here. The first thing we're going to discuss is the monthly crossover here on the MACD. The MACD is a momentum indicator. And so when you get these bullish crossovers on the MACD, that does have longer term implications on the charts. You can see we had one here in 2009. We had one here in 2016. Obviously, there are whipsaw signals. This was a whipsaw signal in 2019 due to the shutdown, which reversed the markets. But from a statistical standpoint, if we have a crossover right now, that would bring in bullish momentum for the next uh, couple of months, at least two to three months. Of course, if we end the month of July in the red, if we start to reverse here at the resistance level, that would be a failed crossover. That would be a kiss of the orange line of the slower moving average. And that would have long term bearish implications and would create a lot of damage to this monthly chart. So that is definitely the first thing you need to watch on the longer term chart, the MACD crossover. The second thing I'm looking at is the long term momentum slowdown. We're starting to see a lot of divergence on the RSI. You can see here the markets are continuing to make higher highs. We haven't made a higher high in 2020, but if we get that crossover, break that resistance level, we'll likely get an all time high in the coming weeks. And that would extend the divergences we have on the RSI. You can see it's starting to wane down in momentum. And I can give you guys examples of that in the past. We have the dot com bubble here with divergence that started appearing in 1997, all the way through to the topping in 2000. We have the price going up, the RSI going down, and then we have a top and a bear market. Same thing in 2008, we have a higher high right here and the RSI making a lower high right here, a big slowdown in momentum right here, and then a bear market right after. Now make sure to like the video if you enjoy this type of longer term analysis of the markets. You'll quickly notice that all the major tops in the markets were following divergences with the RSI. You can see in 1987 right here, we had a higher high here and the RSI making a lower high, a slowdown in momentum and a big drop following that slowdown. Now, do not think that you have the answer to everything with these divergences because they can take a long time to play out. We saw that with the dot com bubble right here. We started seeing divergences here in 1997 and the markets continued to rally to the top an almost 70 percent rally during a period of three years. That is not a period you want to be sitting completely on the sidelines waiting for a correction. So that is where a sell signal needs to come in. You need to be watching for sell signals. And that's with simple trend lines. You can add a trend line here with the dot com bubble right here. We had divergences. It broke. And that's your sell signal to get out during the bear market. Same thing in 2008. We have a trend line here with lots of reactions over here. Divergences, breakdown, backtest and bear market. And in 2020, we have a huge, huge bull market here and a nice trend line with a few reactions here. We have a reaction in 2010, 2011. I can clean this trend line up a little bit to get that reaction. 2015, 2018, and obviously 2020, we failed to stay below it. This was a false breakdown on the monthly. So those do happen. They don't happen very often on the long term time frame, but they can happen. So for now, we are still above that trend line. So it is safe to be in the stock market from a long term perspective. 
You do need to watch those divergences. Be aware that a topping pattern may be forming as we speak, because if we do head on higher in the coming weeks right now, that would extend those divergences. And the bigger the divergences, the bigger the drop following that. We saw that in 2015, we had small divergences here throughout 2014 and 2015. You can see price making a higher high and the RSI starting to lose momentum. And then we had a nice drop. I think this was a almost 20% drop off the high. So this is significant. Now let's jump into the macros. I think we have a nice view of the technical posture of the longer term charts. So let's start to discuss the monetary policies. And the reason I want to discuss this in particular is because that is the main driver in the boom and bust cycle. Monetary policy is what creates these boom and these busts. And we saw that with the dot com bubble right here. Obviously, there was a lot of speculation surrounding internet companies, but in 1997, we had a monetary easing policy coming through tax regulations that helped push the markets higher for another three years. That is what really led to the creation of the asset bubble right here. In 2008, very similar, we had zero interest rates right here at the bottom. They made it very easy for people to get loans, especially on housing. You had a lot of bad debt throughout this period, and then you had a popping of the bubble and a crash. We can also take a look at Japan as an example. This is the Japanese stock market index. And if you know a little bit about the Japanese stock market during this time period, you'll know that they started increasing monetary easing policies right here in 1987, even though prices were already way overvalued. And that obviously fueled the bubble to go even higher. It then popped and we had a big bear market for a very long period of time. Now, taking a look at 2020 with the S&P 500, we've obviously had quantitative easing pushing this bull market very high. Stock prices have been overvalued since around 2017, massively overvalued, and even more so now that profits have taken a big hit with the shutdown. So now, obviously, we have quantitative easing unlimited, and I think that can definitely push the stock market into a bubble. I think we already are in a bubble right now. Stock prices are incredibly inflated in large part due to the Federal Reserve liquidity. So obviously I've given my opinions on how I think this is all going to end, but there are really only two options. Scenario number one, we see asset bubbles start to appear. We see parabolic moves in the stock market. And so ultimately the Federal Reserve will have to start slowing down their spending, remove liquidity from a very fragile economy. And so I think that may start a panic move down as people start to flow back into cash, realizing that the economy is perhaps more damaged than we think by the shutdown. Scenario number two, we do not see asset bubbles start to appear, but we see the liquidity that was injected into the system start to go where it is needed in the economy. And so they're going to slowly have to reduce the amount of liquidity over a long period of time. And that would probably result in a sideways market for a while. So in any case, I think being invested long term, looking at a decade from now, I do not think it is the wisest investment, at least not in the S&P 500. You can obviously find particular stocks that can outperform in this environment. So that brings me to the asset classes that I think may outperform the stock market in this coming decade. We're going to start with just one in this video, and you can let me know in the comment section if you want me to cover other opportunities in terms of longer term investments. So this particular asset class is gold. I have three main points to make on gold and why I think it can still head on a lot higher in the next few years. First of all, it is coming out of a fierce bear market 
while pretty much every other asset class have been outperforming. So you can say from just a price action standpoint, gold is undervalued right now. Point number two is that demand for gold increases during uncertain times. Point number three, when you have the Fed injecting liquidity into a system, that liquidity is distributed throughout the system and eventually all prices go up with that liquidity. And so you're generally going to start seeing stocks go up initially, then asset classes like gold, and then eventually commodities have their own bull market. And I think this rally right here is a sign that liquidity is really starting to flow back into gold. And I do think that it is only just the beginning. We've been very bullish at Game of Trades for gold since around here. We talked about this area here being the first phase of the bull market with higher lows. And as soon as we broke out of this range right here, we finally had a higher high. That is the second phase of the bull market. And we've been trending up since then. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, good luck on your trading and see you next time.